Hey guys, this lesson's about typography. We're gonna use Lorem Epsom for content that's for like a old Latin that looks like real words that you can use instead of uh, if you don't have content, you can use that kind of text. And we're gonna go over tracking, we're gonna go over some kerning and uh, paragraph formatting. And you can use path with uh, text in After Effects and we're gonna do something like this using from the previous lesson <clears throat> we're gonna go over how to use the path tool to uh, bend these words a little bit change the size of the letters and using uh, paragraph formatting to use like a, a fake legal using lorem epsom So this is what we've done before on the previous lesson and I arranged my cheese and crackers around a little bit to give me this open space. So this is actually uh, the old file that I saved as and named it according to my new lesson typography and I arranged my cheese around a little bit. <coughs> uh, while we're working we can turn these off and have a, a clean slate to look at but since this is our background we're going to get used to seeing stuff in our layer palettes and it kind of gives you a real time look at what you're doing but for now I'm going to turn these off hit save and go up to my type tool if you look at it if you click and hold you have a horizontal type tool and a vertical type tool so let's just take a look at that and my color happens to be black and my background is black so uh, I'm still in the active type tool now it's blue and you notice there's a little cursor so if you hit a quick key to go back you're just going to type it in and if you hit the color to change it there's no nothing that I've typed yet so it'll, uh, it won't be active so I'm always going to go back to my move tool make sure my layer is selected and if it's uh, if you have any issues you can always unselect and then select it again and that truly resets what you're selecting and you can jump to a little quick key down here you can just hit white and go back to black or you can click this little bo uh, box and you pick whatever color you want make sure everything is selected make sure you're not over here at the white make sure your color is up because it was over on the white side I like to keep it pretty basic with my colors <clears throat> so I'm going to readjust this guy so that's typing horizontal and deselect off my layer because I don't want to accidentally type anything go to my type tool again and you can click here go to the vert it's a uh, selected vertical and it gives you this sometimes that's really helpful with graphs <coughs> or just any kind of vertical typing that you need um, you can still select everything returns that kind of stuff I mostly work in horizontal. Very few times I'll have to use vertical. <clears throat> it's not really the kind of work I do for that. But you never know. Okay. So I'm going to type in horizontal. That's what this is. And you can also, uh, there's two ways to insert. You can click and type. And that gives you this type within this type space uh, but if you mess with print or any kind of like Photoshop or Illustrator you can actually click and drag with the type tool and it gives you a box and you can type in this box now see how I'm just typing stuff uh, lorem epsom is good for this kind of uh, task here so I'm going to delete this guy 
delete this guy and delete that guy. I'm going to get my uh, resource for lorem epsom. If I go to my folder structure for this lesson, typography, I have a new folder that I put in here, which is called resources. So I'm going to double click this guy. And I've got some tips on kerning in here, but I've got a lorem epsom link. So I'm going to double click that guy. It tells you a little bit about what this is, where it comes from, that kind of thing. Uh, if you go to the top, you have the different languages that you can use. If you go down just a little bit, you can generate it by paragraphs, words, bytes, lists, whatever. I just use paragraphs. You can say how many or how many words. I'm leaving it at its default. I'm going to hit generate. And it generates one, two, three, four, five paragraphs of Latin. Now if you just look at it, you could kind of think it's saying something and it's not an obvious uh, just hooked out typing of nothing. It actually looks like it could be something. So that's what's good about Laura Epsom. And you can click and paste it. I don't think I pasted anything in there. And make sure I selected it. Control C for copy. Come over here to my type tool. Control V. And there we go. Now if you just click and type something, it's going to go from left to right, depending on your settings over here. Uh, but see how it's one long line of text. That's the whole paragraph in one line. And it fit. And that's not really what we want for a paragraph. If you select the type tool again and click and drag, you get a box. And you can hit the paste. And that's what the box is used for. And uh, just like, I'll show you some, some tools using this box. i to make sure I can see this frame. So here's our frame. I'm going to select my text and make it a little smaller. Uh, you can type in your text size here or you can click and drag the numbers. Close to 40 so I'm going to hit 40. Go to my paragraph. It should be default to this <coughs> left aligned text. Now this paragraph tool is pretty cool. This is uh, any kind of text you have, you could use this. And you have left aligned, you have center aligned, right aligned. And if you mouse over, you can see what else they have. Justified, which I think it fits as much as it can with the spacing between the words to make a nice, clean left and right. You can see this little icon, how it's jagged and then this are straight. So if there's any kind of words, let's see if I can create one. Where it has a little space in there. This allows that space to live. Same thing with this, space, space. That justified, there'll be a, a right justified, there's a space on this side. But since this space is here, uh, you can use these tools to make it pull all the way to the right and stay on the left. I think it's because I have a return in there, not a soft return. But you can notice on the top how it jumps and meets the margin of that box. And you can adjust the box itself too. And it will try to fill that space using this, the negative space between the words. So these are very, very helpful. And one thing that I use to align with this guy, I'm using Alt Control. 
the same tools that you have for transform. Actually, I'm going to hide this guy so we can see something different. So if I type this guy, I'm always going back to my move tool so I don't accidentally type something in. I'm going to make it off center. I'm looking for my align tools, which is under window align. This is just like Photoshop and Illustrator. You can do it by selection, only have one selection. Uh, or you can do it by composition, which is the artboard. And in After Effects, it's called composition. But you can do the same kind of align tools left align, right align, middle, top, bottom, middle. So when you're doing design work, it's always good to try to build your stuff in the center as possible. And the go-to thing for text, so you know the exact center of this thing, yeah, you could eyeball it, but you have these tools to make it exact. So click the center and then click the center, and it's exactly in the center. If I hide this guy and go back to this paragraph, you can do the same thing. And I'm just going to click the center and center. So if you're doing titles for a, a short film or anything like that, you probably want to go here and uh, make sure it's centered. So uh, we centered it with the align tool and then we centered it with the formatting of uh, the the paragraphs. I'm going to turn this guy back on. I'm going to show you these other type of tools that can really help your your look. So I've got my layer selected. I can go to my size. Now you see how when you size up your your font it's coming off of this uh, anchor point, your pivot point. So how do you center that? You go to your paragraph and look at it. it's left justified. That's why this anchor point is off on the left side of this text. You always go to center. And then you go to your align tools and center it. So if you're doing a title, be mindful of that. When your stuff starts moving, uh, it's good to remember uh, if this is the title, it's going to be in the center. Whenever you first start off, you type something. And that is weird. size is off. That was weird. Okay, so I was typing in the, the size was at like zero. But whenever you do a title, most titles are in the middle, perfectly aligned. Uh, you need to make sure that, you know, if you align this guy with your align tool perfectly in the center, and your paragraph is on left justified, you're going to have to, if you want to resize it, you're going to have to readjust it. So it's a good habit to set these files up for when other people come in and want to adjust the size. Uh, just make sure it's in center and that you align it center. So when you make these adjustments to size, it won't affect the composition. The composition being the text right in the center perfectly uh, from left to right good to have a clean setup file. All right. So there are some there 
are some options in here. I'm on Garamon, so hopefully you guys have that on your system. I think you would. I have a bunch of cool fonts that you can download. But uh, it would be a shame to do something cool and that you can't really work with it. You have to go find the font. <coughs> uh, sometimes they have these like 100 best free fonts for a limited time. And I go through and actually download those guys. So I have a, a library of fonts to use. It's uh, something that I started to do more and more. Okay, let me show you this. So with this layer selected, you can double click it or you can just select the type tool and you can select in between these guys just like normal. Uh, if you use the arrow, left and right arrows, uh, you can go between these guys, which is pretty common. Uh, there's a thing called kerning, and what that does is it can move the individual layers depending on where your cursor is. Uh, they even have a game. I'm going to have to give you the game. But like between the H and the O, the space is kind of big compared to the I and the L. So if you want to match the I and the L for this O, you can select your cursor in between it or use your arrows and hold down alt and then hold in while holding down alt and using your arrow keys will move the negative space or the the letters closer together and you can do alt other arrow and it'll spread them out spreading them out is sometimes a style. I'm going to say Oblivion had a really cool spread out style and it's kind of sci-fi-ish um, future or it could be scary the closer you, uh, the more you spread these letters out. Go back to your move tool or your text tool and I can use my arrows hold down alt and you could touch everything but less is more but we'll just check this out so you can do different looks with this technique like uh, you can almost make a, a logo out of it tighten it up or clear it out I'm going to deselect so I can see it. It's very subtle. Uh, you might not can tell, but that uh, going through your titles and adjusting little things like that really bump up your value. Uh, it's good practice. Make your stuff look different than somebody else. So I'm going to type this again. You probably let's practice our alignment. So you might not can tell, but there's a little bit of difference. The film is pretty tight. Uh, it's really noticeable style-wise if you use like impact, which is a huge font, or like a Helvetica. Uh, it's pretty ugly, but we're going to go with it. But if you can just go ahead and touch those guys, you almost make a new font. It's kind of cool. Used to be the style back in the day. Maybe not that extreme. Sometimes you get them to where they touch and then you just knock them off two, two pixels or so. different styles which is using the kerning I'm going to delete that guy and you have these tools down here too 
So that's the size. Uh, this is for when you return. So here's uh, different little options you can use. Zero knocks it back to default. And I guess this font doesn't like that. But uh, you have overall kerning over here. So you have negatives. And you have uh, positives. You have a drop down where you can quickly, quickly go to one. Uh, or you can just type it in if it doesn't allow it. See, it's like 200. If you want more than that, you type it in. And that already has like this cool look to it. You always have to make sure your layer is selected. Let's say it's 100. Uh, you could go crazy with it. And let's see. So you could have, uh, wait first let me align, window, line, I'm going to center it because I did a new line and it was off center. Make sure I'm centered here. Uh, okay so I've got this first line, they're all formatted globally with these settings. If I wanted to adjust just this line, you select that line. And then you can come down here and reset it to zero put the size low, like where it's little. But I'm not going to do the size yet because I want to show you guys uh, this. See how it's like two letters? It's the first line and the second line. Uh, you can click this guy, go auto, and it'll fix it according to what the font uh, maker set it. You can go to 8 pixels, that's overlapping. 60 pixels, it's not enough. If you click and drag, this is the space on when you return. So when you hit return or enter, <clears throat> that's how that's the distance between the next line, which is right here. So that comes in handy. You can always go back to auto, and it goes back to its natural state. But if you want to adjust it, and then if you just select the area that you want to affect, you can make this smaller. <coughs> 35 is good enough. Now, since it is smaller, I'll make my name smaller. The title should be the biggest one. The size should be at it, uh, according to importance. And uh, so it's equally spaced with this tool. You can adjust it like that. You can, whatever you have selected, you can adjust. If you want the end, you can adjust the end. So you can uh, adjust the size to this, or you can uh, come down here and then adjust everything else. If you just want to do line by line, you have to select it like so. Now since you adjusted it per word, you'll look at these settings and it's because there's three different settings going on. We had the kerning for this guy and whatever I have selected with that one kind of uh, settings that we've done then they show up. If you try to do multiples it'll go to these little bars because there's three different 
little uh, custom effects that we have on here our settings uh, this one was by itself so all the settings come up and I'm selecting this and it's all these settings come up but if you try to select across two different settings it'll give you this little dash so just be mindful of that not to freak out uh, just select what you need to select uh, if you want to go back and totally mess this up you can just type in something and it'll all be there so something to be mindful about and let's see so if you draw the box and you have Laura Epson in it it's going to adjust everything in that box and if we want to center it, you know, every time you size it, it's going to be off center, hanging off the bottom. Make it fit. You go to your align tools, which I know mine is over here. Align center and then center. We do left, we do center. So we're going to go over to character, and we're going to look at this. Same same settings. And you can adjust the negative space between the returns. You have your kerning globally. That's spreading out the negative space. You can tighten it up. And that negative space is almost gone. Getting out of that. Uh, sometimes... Let's see. I'm going to kill that. I'm going to hide it. Actually, I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to select all inside this box and copy it. Now I'm going to kill it. A common thing to do is have a definition or a sales presentation like uh, and my settings are set from the old stuff so I'm going to Go back and hit zero. And I hit zero, which is auto. Get my settings back to normal. Whoa, clicking too fast. You can drag out. You can drag all your menu menus around, so be careful with that. And I'm going to go to my align tools. For example, I'm using it a lot. So HD display. Now HD could be a technical term being 1920 1080. Some people might mistaken it for 4K. Uh, 4K isn't that big right now, so you have to specify that it is not 4K. So people put a one in there, and uh, it's called a superscript. If you go over to your characters. You have these little tools down here. You can mouse over and you can say it <clears throat> you can tell everything to be a bold an italic all caps small caps so even if you type it see how display is not there's only one cap everything's lowercase uh, you could say all caps but it's not truly all caps it's just this setting is turned on and it everything looks like it's all caps it's a quick way to do it instead of retyping it really cool. So you click that and you can turn it off. <coughs> All slow, uh, lowercase caps. And you have a little one. Superscript and a subscript. So that's a superscript. But we want it on our number one. So just like in books, that's a superscript and it's a note to be displayed down here and we commonly refer to this as legal uh, you see that at the bottom of a lot of commercials so I'm selecting my lower maps and make sure I'm on my move tool make sure my layer is selected and I can change my font to be little 20 or so mm, I'm going to make this nice tight 
that's justified. There must be a return in there. And there's our, our legal. And what you'll see is one dot space so when you see stuff on screen that says HD display you'll see a little subscript and you somehow you're supposed to pause the, the commercial come down here and it'll say it is not truly HD we're ripping you off and it's our job to put these little graphics in so they're protected how convenient but that's how you can do some subscripts uh, that's a superscript. So a subscript would be sub, underground, submarine, subterranean. And that's how you do those little <coughs> special marks. So be, be mindful whenever you see titles and you see a little legal, it'll have a number and you look up here and you'll see like a little fine print and that's how you guys do it and that's what this little box really comes in helpful for the legal uh, the legal text on the bottom okay, I'm gonna save this guy I'm gonna call this I'm gonna retype it crackers and cheese so that's me just typing this guy uh, and it's totally cool. You could just do it like that. Oh, here's another thing. Bringing up this safe frame, you could bring it down to this bottom piece here and just make sure it doesn't go beyond this very last little reference slide. It's looking pretty legit. <coughs> but back to this crackers and cheese you can adjust this guy and do some custom sizes to it uh, you come in here select a, a letter and adjust the size of the letters you can pick a different font if you wanted to I don't recommend it but you could But I was going to show another cool way to do this thing. Huh. Alright. So if we want to put this guy on a path, you could. So I'm going to draw a path in here. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Now I drew this pen, this pen tool, and made a path on this cheese and crackers font layer. So if I go down here, go to the text tool, and there's path options. So we got uh, the text layer. I have a mask, but I'm looking under the text dropdown. So there's two options. There's path options and more options. Let's go to path. And under path is a drop down. Nothing selected. But if I select down here, my mask is available. And you can select that mask. So let's come over here. I want to have it so we can see both. Uh, go to path, go to mask one. And it's surprisingly easy. So now our text is going along this path. It's pretty cool. Um, in this newer version it's really easy if you have an older version uh, you have to do it in a little different way you can google it but, uh, okay so we got our mask path we can select it we can see our path here uh, you can select the points and drag them around that in itself is pretty cool so the path is still editable and guess what the text is still editable. You can even 
pipe. Pretty cool. <clears throat> you can do some interesting things with it. Uh, you can reverse the path. It's, it's since I uh, started the path over here, you see the big knot. It's round. That's where it starts. That's where it finishes. Uh, if you hit reverse path, it'll reverse the direction. Perpendicular to path. You see how it's. Uh, looks like stairs so uh, they'll always stay looking right side up instead of in the direction of the path force alignment that's basically like an align tool spacing uh, you have margins on your the first <coughs> basically the left And you have the last margin, which as you can see, it looks like an animation. And you can keyframe this, so you totally can animate it. And we have more options down here. Uh, the anchor point is right in the center, using that little cursor line. You can say per character, per word, so the center points are where the center of the words are, or letter. You can do it by the whole line, or all, which is the whole line. <clears throat> but I think you'd have multiple returns. So you can do it by character. Uh, you can go into more detail here with the fill stroke. I don't really mess with that. Uh, so I can go back to my mask tool and hit delete. Gets rid of that path tool. We no longer have our path options because there's no mask there. But the, the, the path you want to use has to be drawn on this layer. Okay, so I want to do a circle <coughs> or a part of a circle, just a curved line. And if it helps, I'm using these I'm using this bottom piece and the middle piece here as a guide just to make a nice curve. It's now on the bottom, so I'll do that. And I don't want to connect it. I want to keep it open. I'm going to move this guy down to about the center. It's a good starting point. And I'm going to go to my options. I have my mask tool. I can name it. Text. Curve. I'm going to go to my text tool, go to my path options, I've got a path, nothing selected, I drop down, it's whatever I named it, text, text curve, selecting that, I like that, I'm going to change my size, and cheese. Actually, I had cheese crackers. And I can do a return. I actually want to do an and in here. So I got to work on my spacing. I need to make this guy to my type tool. Selecting my end. Just not like that. Let's do this. Let's make it smaller. Try that again. There we go. Sometimes you just have to select this thing and uh, mess with it. If it's not working, try a different selection. Like select it again. And now I'm going to select these two and adjust this. So 
So I'm looking at this negative space on the bottom to the top, right behind the E. I'm going to select the ampersand, and it's not like that. And then like my negative space. I think I can settle that. Now I'm looking at the negative space, it's a little low. So I can select this guy, go to my line tools, center it. So it will always center to the perfect center as best as its ability. And since it's a computer, it's doing it's doing pretty good. Okay, so I'm looking at the negative space between the letters. Crackers looks pretty good, and that's because of this curve is squishing everything together. Cheese is a little far apart, and you can adjust your kerning to match the bottom. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to make it a little fun. I'm going to select the S. I want to increase that size, S, and increase the size of the E, and decrease this E. This is where it's fun. <clears throat> Just have some fun with it. Okay, and this K, I think I can make it bigger. And this E, like a, like a hill. Make this small. Make this bigger. I can work with my kerning to space that out a little bit. My S. The E, the R can go a little further down. that's good enough for now. It's kind of looking more like a logo, like a brand of some sort. That's good. Got my legal underneath here. We no longer have a subscript. Uh, make sure this is in the center. We adjusted it. It looks at the pixels. <clears throat> and I need to type one more thing. I'm making a new layer with the type tool. I'm not going to continue on any of these layers. I'm going to make a whole new one. I'm just going to type once. Presented by and then I can say my name. I can say your name here. And uh, sometimes it, when you type it looks like this. So we're going to go to auto. We're going to go to zero. Go back and readjust your settings. <clears throat> Nothing to freak out about. Saving this guy. Uh, I think this presented by can be small. I'm looking at the size of this with. Well, that's what happens when you don't get off your pen tool. I use the space bar to move around to look, but I had this selected and it'll create a space. It'll overwrite everything I selected. So be careful for that. Save in space. Now I'm looking at the width of these words compared to presented by. And I'm gonna make presented by fairly small compared to these guys. And then my name, your name, I can make it where it looks like there's a direction. Let's do 35. Let's check out this size, 22, let's do 20. kind of let this live on its own little space and then present it by us. It's looking fairly legit. I'm going to select both of these guys, go to my line tool, say composition, center, center. Didn't do what I wanted. Uh, 
I'm going to paste it centered. I'm going to readjust that negative space here. Take a look at it. And here's where, because we, it's too early to kind of group these guys and pre-comp them to do the align tool. So this is where our expertise as designers comes in. I'm looking at the negative space here and here. There's more on the top. So let's move it up to where it just feels good. And we're probably going to need to adjust the size on this thing. But that's looking pretty good. Black and white simple design. Uh, I want to center this guy. Paragraph center. There we go. It's looking pretty. So now we can see what it looks like in context with everything else. Kind of hard to read. Take a look at it. first thing I can notice is uh, it's hard to read, but the size of this can be adjusted. If we go through and adjust the size now, after all of our uh, things that we tweaked, it'll mess up our design. And that's where scale comes in. Instead of uh, changing the, the font size, messing everything up, uh, we can scale the whole layer and not mess anything up but we're just adjusting the scale and wrong layer. Well, I don't want to mess with that lorem epsom. I want to mess with this presented by cheese and crackers is visually on top presented by is on the bottom so I arrange that guy in order of appearance. So now I can adjust my scale. I'm going to adjust this title where it's nice and almost ridiculously too big. So 160 is pretty good. Uh, presented by, and bring it down. I think that can still stay small. Let's just look at 160. See, it's a little crowded. I like that feeling of small compared to the logo. <clears throat> okay, so first off, this is looking a little contrasty contrast issues we need to make it a little more readable so I'm going to do a trick to bring in a solid I'm going to drag that solid to the top I'm going to name it vignette and I'm going to put a circle effect on it generate circle in case you forgot right click effect generate circle that gives us a circle. I'm going to go to the edge like that. Close to 850. So I'm going to type 850. I'm going to change the color to a black. I'm going to invert this color. I'll go to my feather settings and say 150. Not quite enough. Click and drag 250. Just as I expected. Still pretty strong. I'm put a multiply so it affects the colors underneath. And now I'm going to adjust the opacity. I think I can go down to 15. Too light. 25. Too light. Let's go to 50. All right. That's looking kind of cool. All right. So we got a vignette. So our when you look at this now, your eyes are drawn to the center, to the lightest point. But now we're going to do some effects on this to look uh, like burnt wood, as if you had a brand and you touched this uh, chopping block and it burned the logo <coughs> into this wood. And the way I do that, um, first let's uh, change the color of this guy. And turn it to black. Uh, legal is usually white. I'll just keep it white. Those were easy, so I got them out of the way. So cheese and crackers. 
this is where I use layer styles again. So first off, uh, let's see. Let me zoom in. This needs to be a darker color, so we're going to go to layer styles and look at our options. Uh, you might want to do bevel emboss, but we don't want to do that yet. Uh, let's just do a color overlay to get a color in there. So I'll, I see it down here in my layers. And I'm going to move this up a little bit. Double click that guy. And uh, I can click a brown or I could just use my color picker. I'll go to this dark area. And I've got a nice brown immediately. That's a start. Still not dimensional. So what else can we do? Right click, go to layer styles. You're going to look like it's inside so we need an inner shadow to do that so that looks like it's pushed in pretty not bad and those are just defaults not doing too much to it now if you look at that it looks really crisp really uh, sharp so I'm, I'm gonna put a stroke on this guy and make it look like uh, somebody sanded the edges right here and made a little place for highlight to hit. So we're kind of creating a faux highlight around all these little edges so it's not so sharp. And we're going to do that with stroke. That's not the best color, but we can see what's going on. And we're going to adjust the size. It's at three. Let's go to one. Pretty sharp. Go to not bad. So now I'm going to pick a color for it. I'm going to look in this range. Uh, white might be too white. I need to pick another color other than that white. White somewhere. Ooh, good hit. Uh, it wasn't too white. It wasn't too dark. It was somewhere in this mid color. Let me deselect it so we can see it. You're not really supposed to notice it, but it takes that sharpness off of that edge. And if you want to, you can come into this color and manually mess with it. It cancel so I know I'm back where I was, go to my blacks. So you can mess with that, but I think I hit a good color. And you can see the RGB here, 181, 135, 88, or copy and paste the hex code. So I'm looking at it. It's looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think the highlight could be a little lighter, the stroke. So I'm going to bump up a little bit of that, bump up a little bit of that. It just feels like a little rounded edge. All right, and what else can we do to this thing? I want it inward. I want it to be like a burn around this edge. So it's like an inward glow with a dark color. Inner glow. So that's a light color. Inner glow. And there's a color. You can go dark. And I can do a dark brown. Now there is a blend mode on it, so you can't see it. I'm going to go to normal. And there it is. It's starting to peak out of the edge. Let's see the size. So see how it's shadowing in? I'm looking at the shadow around here. I like the dimension it's, it's doing. While going through this, I noticed they have a noise. 
that's like a free texture. Let's put in 10%. I don't know if you can tell, but now there's a noise in, in the in the gradient. You can go to zero and there's no noise. Uh, turn it up to like 20. See how there's noise. So if you zoom out, it's like this little added benefit of some of these guys. I'm going back to 15, I want it subtle. But your brain likes to pick it up and it just adds a little bit more to it. And whenever you burn something, uh, when you burn it, it's going to have like this burned like it'll be darker towards this burn because the metal touched here so there'll be like this little outward singe so I'm going to right click that guy go to layer styles outer glow and let's find it here it is double click it I'm going to go to normal and go pick a dark color first I want to pick it here can't really see nothing because it's small. So I drag a little bit, I'm at like 20, 24. Zoom out. Let's go to 30. And I'm going to turn on the layer mode again, the blend mode, to multiply. Let's go down this list, color burn doing what it says. Uh, it's a little saturated for me. It's on the way. So we can turn that down. But I don't want to turn it down. I want that look, just not that color. Uh, it's kind of too saturated. Let's see what else I got. Linear burn, that's more desaturated, which is good. Lighten. And this is just like Photoshop I'm going through it. Let's see, let's go back to linear burn. I'm digging that. Uh, make it subtle. So I'm close to 45. I'm going to do 50. I'm going to be bold. All right now, that stroke is really showing up. So we need to adjust that guy. We could do it with opacity and not mess with the color. So let's go down to zero. Interesting, still there. Let's turn it off. Okay, so we're going to have to adjust the color because opacity didn't work. It's still there. Uh, we have a layer mode on top. So let's, I'm going to keep it at the zoom level and I'm going to just look at overall until it kind of blends in bring it down. I need some more color. Still looking up here, making sure it's in a good range. Check my color. My blacks could be darker. Saturation could be a little less vibrant. Now my burn is looking pretty burn-like, almost too much. That's my outer glow. Accidentally made a keyframe. Let's turn up my opacity. Let's see. Let's go to normal. Let's turn this guy down. That's at 48. Uh, let's go back to where we were down to 48 or so. Hmm. Go back to normal. And instead of now it's black, I'm gonna color pick a different color and make it live in this palette of color. Looking for a dark, dark patch. Uh, let's 
from this. Not bad. I could add some more dark to it if I need to. Now I can come in here and adjust this guy. So it's still a little smoky. And I got a noise. I can break it up. So notice that the noise here, see that's really ugly. And you can go really slight and pull it up until it looks like it's kind of blending into that texture a little bit. 20 is a good number. A little visible. Go back to 15. looking okay. Uh, I think the brown, the color of the text, the base text, could be a little lighter. Let's go to my layer styles. Let's go to color overlay. Let me try to lighten this and see how that looks. Let's go pick a color. made a little darker. The light colors weren't working, but the dark color is. And I like it. So now we got a logo that looks like it's pressed in there. Presented by us. And we have our old background on there. So I think that's pretty cool. I think you guys can do this. Picking up pretty good. Uh, cheese and crackers. See you guys next time.